The ladies and gentlemen, students, distinguished and honored guests, from the heart of Calypso country, from the Emerald Isle of the Caribbean, and from the Ivy League of the Caribbean, I am deeply pleased to announce the opening of the 2014 11th Annual Winter Mid-Year Commencement Ceremony of the University of Science, Arts, and Technology, Montserrat. Welcome one and all, let the ceremonies begin. Distinguished guests, all please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for coming. This is a very momentous occasion, one to celebrate, and we're happy to see you all here. I especially appreciate uh, everyone, the parents, the family, because this is a family affair. It is intended to be that, and we want it to be that exactly. This is a momentous occasion, because this is a time when you close one chapter and open the next. Dr. Sagwa, can you come forward, please? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, Shall we stand up for the praise? Heavenly Father, we come before your throne of grace and mercy as your humble servants. We want to use this opportunity to say thank you for a wonderful achievement. After all these years of rigorous studies, it's a great accomplishment that today some of us are celebrating our degrees from masters to PhDs to doctors of public health and all sorts of degrees. Most high God, we just want to say thank you for this great honor in the name of Jesus Christ. Our Father and our God, this achievement would not be possible without the great lecturers that you've used for us. I cannot mention them all, but I've got to mention Dr. Todd, Dr. Einstein, Dr. Victor, and a lot of other ones that worked rigorously to make this day a great one for us. We thank you for their lives. We thank you for the strength you gave them. We thank you for the wisdom of teaching us. We thank you for the patience they have with us. Lord, we pray that because they have poured their knowledge and their wisdom upon us, 
You shall pour your strength and your longevity upon them as a body and as a family in the name of Jesus Christ. Most high God, we bring those of us that are graduating today before your throne of grace and mercy. We are thanking you. We are also praying that as they go into the world, you shall open doors of opportunities for all of us. Thank you for this great occasion. Thank you for making it a wonderful success. By faith, we receive your blessings in every area of our lives in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, most high God, for answered prayers. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Yeah, you may be seen. I would like to take this time to introduce some of our faculty, our esteemed faculty. Uh, we have an extraordinary faculty at USAP, better than any I've ever known, and have ever I've had the pleasure to work with. First, Dr. Carla Connick. Dr. Bruce Robinson, Dean of College. Dr. Rudin, Dr. George Einstein, Dr. Gary Kaufman, Dr. Arlene Ramsarin, Dr. Andrew Taranka, Dr. Fran Sainville. Dr. Keith Bailey, and Dr. Tony Brown. And I am our new registrar, Tim Langford, our director of IT, Jeff Arlo. And finally, our chief of uh, music uh, production here, Dave Tulp. Thank you all for without you guys, none of this would happen. And now I'll turn the mic over to Dr. Robinson. I think he wants to say a few words. Thank you, Dr. Well, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished faculty and honored prospective graduates, I'm so happy to be here with you today. I've been affiliated with the school now for exactly five years. And every time I've stood in class, I've loved the experience of sharing with you my joy in medicine and my excitement about sharing some of my experiences over the years because I'm older than you are. <laughs> at any rate, as I look at your faces in class, I'm always aware that you're staying awake at three in the afternoon, mostly, and, um, <laughs> and then You've been sitting since 8 in the morning, and you have to do that all weekend. But I'm further aware that the other days of the weekend, you're not resting up for this experience. You are busily pursuing your own careers, and this is on top. Other people who go to school set aside other things, and they just go to school. And you are uniquely different. You're more mature, you're highly motivated, and you're really carrying and juggling a lot of balls in the air at the same time. I am proud of you. And I would say that all of us in this room today salute your great accomplishments. Thank you, Dean Robinson. Well, next we'll have our reading of We Are You Sat by Eric Siegel. We Are You Sat. We at You Sat believe in the pursuit of excellence in education, research, patient care, and community service in the esteemed British American tradition. With integrity, ethical behavior, and respect for all and everyone. We value humanism and compassion for all people without distinction of age, race, 
gender, national origin, or beliefs. We are committed to working cooperatively and collaboratively with our students, teachers, mentors, staff, and community members who make invaluable contributions to our institution and the continued development of our mission and vision every single day of our lives. In all aspects of university life, we will foster the highest values of sincerity, integrity, professionalism, honesty, collegiality, and a free expression of open-minded exchange of ideas within the highest standards and to make USAT a vibrant and living institution now and in the future. Our mission is to develop not only the practitioners of today, but to lay the leaders of tomorrow at home and abroad. This is a lifelong learning. This is USAT. Now we have a special selection by Jay Harrison. through this schooling process. As he said, most of us, Dr. Robinson stated, we have a lot of other things to do. Some of us run full-time clinics. Some of us are still enough to get married in the middle of school and then fight cancer with their wife. So it's been an amazing time. But I remember, sadly, 26 years ago, sitting in the chairs of the first day of chiropractic college, and the inevitable president said, look to your left, look to your right, one or both of those people will not be here when you graduate. So it puts the fear of God in you. And then it didn't matter to me as much then as it did at the end when you graduated, when you said, now look to your left and look to your right and see who's made it. So I want you to look to your left. I want you to look to your right. I want to give yourselves a round of applause because you made it. Joe Thomas mentioned earlier, we're getting our gowns on, you know, here we go again. It's not our first rodeo graduation. <laughs> it's a completely different ball game, though. You know, we now get the opportunity, thanks Dr. Tulp, and having the vision to have this university, to have Dr. Robinson and the rest of the teachers, and I have to be saying, the amazing and effervescent Dr. Einstein, <laughs> to give us the knowledge that they've given us to get through where we are today, to get ready for what really becomes our life and the practice of medicine. So the other thing that I remember from chiropractic college is one of the deans said to us, no matter what you do, no matter where you go, no matter where you decide you want to be, take care of your patients, and they will take care of you. So it's our job to go into practice with open minds and open hearts to listen to our patients and to treat them and to do what's best for them, and they will take care of us. 
And so I wish you all the bless and to all the glory you go to God. And I thank you very much. I remember a comment that one of our students made about almost three years ago. And it had to do with one of Dr. Einstein's biostatistics lectures. <laughs> and the student came out of the classroom, he says, God, I don't know who he's talking to, but it's not me. <laughs> I would now like to call uh, Sir Charles Schultz forward. My fellow Montserrat American, welcome. Sir Charles William Schultz III was born in Renton, Washington, spent his early years in Washington and Florida, where he graduated in 1975 at the age of 17, so now you can guess his age, <laughs> as an exceptional student from the prestigious Edward H. White High School in Jacksonville. He has had a lifelong curiosity and interest in robotics, artificial intelligence, and in space travel and exploration. And I will tell you at this point, his resume reads like an encyclopedia, except the encyclopedia is shorter. <laughs> he built his first robot by age 14, read Dante's Inferno, Inferno at age eight. I haven't read it yet. What's good? And his resume of accomplishments reads, like I said, like an encyclopedia. Sir Charles scored in the top 1% nationwide on the college board exams, missing only five questions. That really ticks you off, doesn't it? How do you give about it? And earned the highest score in the Southeast region on the reading comprehension examination, and 99% on the U.S. military SBAP exam. I congratulate you on that. You have my score. Here's a word of five-year scholarship to the Florida Agricultural and Mechanical University. He was the grateful, re grateful recipient of the Young Genius Award in the year 2000. By age 20, he had earned a position as a quality control engineer at Martin Marietta Aerospace Division, Orlando, where he performed calibration, inspection, and assembly of defense systems and components, and of spaceflight hardware at age 20. In the next 10 years, he would be assigned to many projects involving advanced knowledge and skills in aerotechnology, research and development, and establish an international reputation in the field of aeronautics and space exploration. By age 30, he was invited by the government of Italy to repair and rebuild the Da Vinci exhibits hardware, now used in many applications worldwide. By age 32, he was the chief engineer for the Orlando Science Center Planetarium and a member of the Orlando-based Central Florida Astronomical Society, one of the numerous professional societies in this field of engineering. While at Orlando, he was responsible for the rewiring of the original Apollo space capsule exhibit. He built a 3.8 million volt Tesla coil, and I learned today that my Tesla doesn't have a Tesla coil. <laughs> I am disappointed, but it still goes zero to 60 in three and a half seconds. <laughs> he designed custom hardware for the Epcot Center and authored the Planetarium Show Planetarium Special Effects and created additional robots for the center. By age 40, he became supervisor of the Back to the Future Hanna-Barbera Productions. And he was knighted as Sir Charles by the Barony of Balcahane in Scotland. More recently, he has investigated the link between telomeres, one of my favorite topics, longevity, and apoptosis, something we'd all like to avoid, <laughs> and the study of epigenetic, epigenetic information transfer. More recently, he has expanded the study of the universe and discovered the presence of water and marine fossils on Mars, which were the subject of his PhD thesis. This has all been confirmed by the other investigators. He has appeared on the Space Show with Dr. David Livingston and Richard Hoagland, 
there are pioneers in the field as well. Sir Charles has authored numerous books on physics and space travel. He has time to write, I believe, three novels. We call them grant applications. <laughs> and, made, and made dozens of guest appearances on major network TV and radio networks. His lifelong curiosity for ways to improve survival, humanity, and the quality and length of human life has enabled him to travel throughout the world during his quest for science and discovery. Based on the highly meritorious and uncompromising passion for science and discovery, and longstanding service to the community, the University of Science, Art, and Technology is honored to award Sir Charles William Schultz III the degree of Doctor of Science, honoris causa, specializing in physics of the atmospheric and space science and technology, the highest recognition that one can earn in his discipline. Sir Charles. Uh, Dr. Robinson will be assisting in presenting this certificate of recognition to Sir Charles. And congratulations to the newest doctor in the room. <laughs> Charles, the floor is yours. Thank you. I'll only take a few minutes. I know there are many things to do this evening. It is an honor, and I am very appreciative of this award. And I hope that I can continue to produce even greater things than I've done in the past. I, I humbly submit that everything that I do rests on the achievements of many others. It's only synthesis and recognition of certain specific threads of thought that make this research come to life. I have an idea that came to me a little while back, and I think it's something that many of you might find interesting to pursue in your careers. I see some of you will be looking into research as well as medical, not just for simply, simply curing things in human illness, but possibly preventive measures as well. I was thinking about the structures of enzymes and active molecules, and how each has a specific reactive site, so that we know an enzyme performs a specific transformation in a chemical environment that it's suited for. So what happens if you alter the shape of the reactive site on an enzyme? I began thinking of it in terms of mechanism, nanotechnology in particular. Many of you are interested in nanomedicine, and nanotechnology is a greatly expanding field at this time. Suppose we come up with a series of very simple actuators that can be digitally programmed to reshape the reactive site or the folded site in an enzyme. Now we have the ability to do some interesting research in how the active site changes, what it can produce, and what sort of enzyme reactions we can modulate or control on a very fine level. I think this could be an extremely useful tool for exploring the mechanisms of the cell. And never forget, a cell is a factory controlled by a computer. But the chromosomes are little more than file cabinets full of instructions for the production of proteins and enzymes. And that other genes in there as well, the homeotic genes, control an orchestration of other genes in action. I believe that using controllable enzymes will give us a tool for probing at the actions and the addressing of this information and help us to understand how the cell works and perhaps to reverse certain types of disease. Basically, that's all I have to say, and I hope that it inspires you to think of something new. Thank you very much. cum laude, as well as three candidates for the degree of Master of Education cum laude from the nations of Canada, the United Kingdom, Malaysia, South Korea, Japan, North Ireland, Hong Kong, Australia, and the USA, many of whom are overseas. Therefore, they are in absentia. And given the duration of the program, I will talk very, very fast, as fast as I can. 
and but we will go down the list if we may and the names are as follows for the Bachelor of Education. <coughs> Leah Aguirre, Virginia Ayala, Mensa Cohn, Jose Chavelas, Hans Chin Fat, Jason Costanzo, Melissa Cruz, Joel Chrisman, Alain Deschen, Maurice Dion, Sonia Gisler, Micah Ehrman, Daniel Espinosa, Nicholas Fry, Yasuhiro Fukada, Catalin Gabor, Sergio Abraham Garcia, Emily Ann Garish, Melissa Giesel, Michael Grazier, David Gooning II, Jennifer Harrington Gooning, Kaiko Vitani, Stephen Antonio James, Rhee Kitamura, Miho Kiyatani, Enchule Lin, Birgit Maltz, Josue Masson, Claudia Martini, Christopher Miller, Kelsey Navarro, Mari Newsom, Hiromichi Ohara, Kenji Orino, Taito Osada, Yukiko Atsuka, Akiz Osharova, Ivan Paiva, Dinesh Pala, Shannon Sumanti Pala, Ramasani Pala Krishna, Shamini Rachel Pala Krishna, Stephen Michael Peterson, Curtis Pike, Susanna Ray Sansusi, Richard Silas, Valery Shichef Golov, Ariz Shibizu, Michael Simon, Anthony Spera, Fuiria Suhara, Nayoto Uchida, Mayumi Wehara, Mitsuhiro Yano, Albert Zaragoza, the three masters in education, Sachi Honda, Diane Mare, and Stephanie Skidmore. Thank you, Professor Rudin. <coughs> On behalf of the faculty, the board of directors, and the authority vested in me by Parliament and the government of the British Overseas Territory of Montserrat, British West Indies, the Emerald Isle of the Caribbean, and the Ivy League of the Caribbean, I hereby confer the degree of Bachelor of Education and Master of Education with all the honors, rights, privileges, and obligations pertaining thereof as charged.